We are back for week number five, Road to the Derby. Andrew Capone from Who's Got the Action, and my partner, as always, Caleb Knight from Taking a Stand. Caleb, last week, 50-pointer, uh, went pretty well. Not exactly how we saw it. Epicenter got loose down at uh, <clears throat> Fairgrounds. Any takeaways from that race? Yeah, I think uh, you know, take nothing away from Epicenter and victory. He, he ran a good race. I, I do think the race set up for him a little more favorably than I thought it would going into that race, but uh, credit where it's due. He, he ran a big effort and showed he can get the distance. So I thought that was a nice race by him, but uh, I still think I, I'd be willing to give smile happy another chance. I think he was kind of against the racing flow that day also coming in off a bit of a layoff. So I, I definitely wouldn't write off smile happy just off of that one second place effort. Not at all. Yeah, I agree with you there. I thought coming off the bench, that was a little tough. And definitely the the way the races were all setting up that day, it, it just wasn't for him. Uh, but he does have that running style, which I think could be good for the Derby. So we're a bit down in Arkansas. Uh, race number 11 with an 11-horse field. Uh, it's going to be a good Rebel Stakes, I think. Uh, came out a little chalky when I was looking at my picks. Uh, we're going 1 and 1 16th of a mile on that Arkansas dark red dirt. Um, I'll start us off with the number one here, Kavad. A uh, horse has faced a lot of these foes before. Going to be the speed here. Fourth, last two times out. Once in the Southwest. Uh, last win was in December. It was a sprint. Uh, I'm still not convinced that this horse is maybe a miler or a seven furlong specialist. Um, led the Southwest for 80% of the race. Uh, it's got the speed of the speed coming from the one hole. Figures continuously are improving. Um, maybe we could see a little bit of situation like we saw last week with Epicenter where the horse just gets loose and nobody can close into him. Uh, going to be a live long shot for sure. And I'm excited to see if this horse does make that next step forward um, and, and get past that one mile mark like it, like it hasn't done before. And in the Southwest, it really got to that one mile and then sort of faded really quick. So we'll see if he can hold on here and maybe get that one and one sixteenth. A live long shot I'm going to be looking at. What would you think of the two and the three? Yeah, so the number two, Newgrange, this is a horse that uh, I admittedly did not pick for our preview of the Southwest last time, and he did kind of make me look a little bit foolish there. This is unquestionably the horse to beat in this field, and I would be pretty surprised if you get nine to five. He he didn't get a particularly easy trip in the Southwest. He, he was wide for a lot of it. He was pretty close to the pace that was definitely on the swift side, and once he hit the stretch, he just you know, found another gear and pulled away for a pretty comfortable win. Uh, he, he draws better today and there's probably less speed to deal with today. I, I think he's absolutely the horse to beat here. And it does feel a little bit dirty to take uh, the Bob Baffert chalk in this spot, but I, I think he's a very deserving favorite in this field. The number three, uh, Kairama, uh, this horse is a little bit interesting. He, he's been beaten by a few of uh, today's contenders already but that's not to say that he can't improve. He's one of a, a couple of Steve Asmussen horses in this race. He came out of that Smarty Jones and really was off really slow in that race. I mean, he broke last by 16 lengths and made up a ton of ground, which you know, I think was a really impressive uh, effort, especially in the slop. That is a race that totally fell apart. So I would take that with a pinch of salt. But uh, this is a horse that probably won't be on too many of my tickets. But if you see something there you like, I do think you'll get a great price. What do you think of the number uh, the number four, Unoho? So Unoho is a, is a tough one for me. Um, super interesting horse. I, I do like this horse, and I like this horse for something down the road. Uh, maybe the Haskell, something in the summer. Um, I don't know if this is the spot here. Those figures that came back from the Withers, I mean, we watched the race. Uh, we got it correct that day on the Chad Brown, but... This horse, that Chad Brown wasn't losing, and those numbers that came back from it just were not great. Um, it seems like everything coming out of Aqueduct this winter has just not shipped well and improved. Um, I don't love that Trevor McCarthy doesn't come down to get them out. This is the fifth jockey in six starts. Uh, if this horse was live and there was an opportunity, it already had some derby points for it to make it on that derby derby uh, starting list. I really think that you just seen Trevor McCarthy come down after his last two mounts on it. Um, I will use down the road, but I think this is a horse that you just stable and wait for something in the summer, maybe in the exotics today. But uh, this is a horse I'm going to put in my virtual stable and wait for him to come around in the summer. Um, I think this horse is going to get a little bit bigger and improve. Uh, moving on to the number five, Texas Red Hot. Ricardo Santana Jr. Uh, used to be the king of, of Oakland Park. That's changed a little bit. Um, 
I, I don't think this is uh, an orange J horse that, that he can grow wings for. Um, the horse is a closer in a very tough field. Uh, massive layoff here. I, I don't think it, it shows anything besides good works. The works are good in the morning. Uh, shown a little bit of promise, but I cannot bet in a stakes field a closer that's been this far off the bench. Uh, I would have loved to see a start in between, maybe get him a little closer. Um, the horse will be a, a good horse down the road. Another horse I'm going to point towards put in my stable, look for in the summer, but uh, I don't think it's going to have the ability to really jump forward that much in its three-year-old campaign uh, right off the bench. So it's just one horse that I'm definitely going to be fading. Uh, what do you think of the six? Yeah, the number six, Stellar Tap, is a horse that I, I'm really conflicted about. This horse, he really ran an absolute cracker in his maiden score. He gave Steve Asmussen an all-time win record. He ran a huge figure and just crushed the field. Um the trouble is that he just never ran back to that race. Maybe it's a distance thing, although he is bred to go this far. Uh, maybe that race just took a lot out of him. Uh, maybe the waters were just too much too soon, but he never really got back to that figure. They tried giving him a little bit of time off over the winter, brought him back in an optional claiming last out. And uh, he goes off as the six to five favorite and just can't get the job done. So I don't know what to do with Stellar Tap. I do think that if I'm taking anybody other than Newgrange, I don't think I really want anybody else out of that Southwest stakes. I feel like that field has been fairly exposed at this point. So I would be looking for a new shooter. I think Stellar Tap could be, you know, a horse that has at least shown he has the ability to contend with a horse like Newgrange on his day. It's just a big question of whether he can actually get back to that race or not. So a lot of question marks, but at 10 to 1, I think you do get paid to take that risk. Number seven, Ben Diesel. Uh, this is a horse that I'm going to actually be pretty against in this spot. If you want to throw him in underneath, I think that is, makes a ton of sense. He, he shows up, he's consistent, but I thought he got an absolute dream trip last out. He was stalking behind the pace, had an inside draw. He saved all the ground, you know, got a perfect hole tipped out and still really couldn't manage any better than third. I don't think he could do any better than that. And I think it's likely he that was probably a little bit flattering by a strip. So I'm not too crazy about Ben Diesel in this lot, especially as one of the lower prices in this field. So I'll let him beat me, I think. But what you, uh, any thoughts on chasing time in uh, number nine, Barber Road? So chasing time's an interesting one. Um, this is the third and final Ask Me Soon horse, the field. Um, Gaff gets the mount. Uh, the horse has really not done much wrong in its life. It's two for five lifetime, four for five in the money, and a fourth place finish. Um, the one thing that really interests me about this horse is, is the figures are, are close enough, not exactly what I would say right there, but, but close enough for me to be interested. Uh, it's been the workouts. Um, it's been working with a horse by the name of Optionality. Uh, it's a gun runner filly. Uh, optionality is a two-time black type winner and is entered in the fifth race on the card on Saturday. And so this is the handicapping angle I love is when, when I look at workout partners where uh, they've been working together and, and to see if one's racing before in the day and I get a little better of a feeling going into it. Uh, so this horse optionality has entered the fifth race on the card. Um, I'm really going to be interested to see if it wins that, that, that honeybee stakes. Um, and that will allow me to upgrade this horse to a, a live or long shot and use it in the exacta. The horse isn't my favorite of, of the field here, but definitely one where I'm going to be watching that earlier card to see if this horse is going to be live or not. Uh, moving on to Barber Road. Um, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Third, three seconds in a row. Has some derby points. Continues to show promise every single time. Um, the gate has been a little bit of an issue. If you watch the replays, the horse is broken in. It's broken out. Um, it broke backwards a little bit in one but the horse does have a solid kick, and I feel like if it doesn't get shuffled back and can stay a little bit closer to the field, uh, I think Raylu has a shot here to use that turn of foot and, and possibly run him down. Uh, the one issue is going to be how far out in front are they going to be and, and how close can Barber Road stay. So definitely one that could be a live long shot, but uh, I really have to. it really has to improve on those that gate workouts, um, getting out of the gate and, and that break. But one I'm going to be watching. What do you think of the final 10 and 11? Yeah, I think the 10 and the 11 both are a little interesting in this spot. Number 10, uh, Ethereal Road. I think this is a horse that really impressed me in his last out win where he came out of the gate last by 16 lengths and he won by four lengths. And the pace was not crazy up front. So for him to make that kind of a move and have that sustained drive and just trounce that field with that trip, 
I think that's much more impressive than the speed figure might really indicate there. My big question with him is that he is truly a one run closer. That's going to have to pass all other 10 horses in this field. And if he's going to win, and I don't know that I just see the pace getting absolutely nutty on the front end. It could be moderate to honest, but I don't think it's going to absolutely fall apart. And making his first start against winners, that's a big ask for a horse that needs a lot of things to go the right way. But I wouldn't say that he can't win or count him out at all. I think he's got a, a decent chance in this field and very usable underneath for trifectas and superfectas. The number 11, Dash Attack. Uh, this was a horse that I did like in that Southwest Stakes, and he was pretty flat that day, came up pretty one-paced. So for me, you know, looking at this horse, I would be willing to give him a second chance in here. His first two starts uh, and his maiden and his Marty Jones were both excellent. And it's fair to say maybe he's just better on an off track. If you look at his pedigree, you know, being by Munnings, that definitely stands to reason. He's going to like the mud. Uh, looking at the weather forecast, there is a chance of rain on Saturday. So if it comes up muddy or sloppy, I would be much more interested in dash attack. If the track is fast, I'd still give him a look just because if you look at the way he's been working in the mornings, it does seem like uh, Kenny McPeak has made some changes and this horse has appeared much sharper in the mornings in his last two works since that Southwest stakes compared to the way he was working heading into that. So wouldn't be surprised to see him show a little more speed and get a little more involved early. And I'd be willing to give him one more shot in a race like this uh, at his price of eight to one or somewhere around that. And that's our field of 11 for the Rebel, 1 and 1 16th at Oakland this coming Saturday. A uh, little note on that dash attack when you said the outside, there isn't much of a bias when it comes to Oakland Park. It's actually been almost fair all the way through. But the outsides have been a little bit better, and the outside has been much better in any type of moisture. Uh, we've seen a lot of winners coming from six and out when there's any moisture in the track. So something to keep in mind if we do, good that, do get that rain on Saturday, uh, dash attack might be a live opportunity here. Um, so, Caleb, what do you have as your pick? Nothing too creative, unfortunately, uh, especially two weeks in a row. It feels bad to land on the chalk, but I honestly struggle to see a way that New Grange loses this race. I, I sort of felt like last time was the time to take a shot against him. Uh, he, to me, he's already proven that he's better than 80% of this field when he won the Southwest the way he did. And there's a couple of new shooters that you know, may have a, an outside chance here, but uh, I definitely think that New Grange has the right run style, has the right connections. He's undefeated. He's handled this distance and this surface before. And you know, if you want to take a shot because you don't like the price, I totally understand it. But for me, it's hard to make a case against New Grange in this spot. I'm right there with you. Um, not sexy, chalk eater, two weeks in a row. Uh, New Grange, they, they paid the supplement to get him in this race to 20K. This is uh, the classic Baffert here. Uh, Going to be... Stalking trip, get to the top of the sh stretch, downshift, and win by four is how I see the race. Um, I hate picking Bafferts. I've said it before on other on the stream. Uh, it's it's a horse that I'm definitely going to be on top in my tries and exactas. Um, but I, I think this horse is going to be much the best. Uh, I'm looking for an opportunity to possibly create, create value underneath. Um, I'm going to have two long shots this week. My first long shot, um, I'm a speed capper. I was told a long time ago that you can never teach a horse speed. Um, I always look for the speed in the race, and that's how I, I base everything. So I'm going to play a little bit with Kavad here. I'm going to be using Kavad in, in a lot of my tries and, and exact as on top and, and keying in second as well. I think Kavad, there's an opportunity that gets loose, um, and Newgrange just can't close down. We saw it happen with Epicenter last year and last week, and Happy Saver couldn't close. I think there's an opportunity again. Uh, that what last 1 16th of a mile is going to be the issue. But there, there's an opportunity this horse does get loose and keeps on going. So uh, I'm going to be using Kavad as my first long shot this week. And my second one is a horse I spoke about a little bit earlier. Um, and it's going to be all dependent on watching that Honey Bee Stakes in the fifth race at Oakland Park on Saturday. If optionality shows a new level and, and wins by two, three, four lengths um, or shows a lot of heart and digs in on the rail or, or makes some sort of opportunity where I show the horse is willing to work it and improve and get better, I'm definitely going to be using uh, – I'm going to be looking here and having an opportunity to put chasing time in those exact as and tries again uh looking for the horse to uh to either run up into second or uh or possibly steal it so watching that fifth race is going to be important to me and if it is my second long shot this week is going to be chasing time uh who'd you like for your long shot yeah i think those are both uh two real solid picks in here i think you know, once you get beyond new range it does feel a little bit tough to find horses to feel real strongly about i 
think I would have to lean on Stellar Tap as the price play I'd want to use here. And I truly don't know what kind of price he'll be because this is a horse that tends to get bet pretty heavily and is developing somewhat of a reputation as a money burner in two of his last three. But, um, you know, it, he's the only horse in here that I feel has shown on his day can hang with the horse like Newgrange. And you know, maybe he just, you know, that big first debut race took something out of him. Maybe there was some excuses. I, I really can't create a strong case as to why he hasn't run back to that. But his last race was a little better than the previous two stakes efforts. Maybe the freshening out helped him a little bit. Uh, the winner of that optional claimer, uh, Pride of Medina, that horse went on to run fourth uh, last week in the Risen Star at the fairgrounds. And quite honestly, I think I would take the top three finishers from the Risen Star against anybody in this field except for Newgrange. I think Epicenter, Smile Happy, and Zenden would all be favored in this race uh, without Newgrange in it. So I think a fourth in the Risen Star is pretty comparable to a second in the Rebel, given the way the fields have shaken out this year. So uh, I would give Stellar Tap one more chance here to uh, prove me wrong and uh, show me that maybe he can get back to some of those races he showed as a two-year-old. Well, everybody loves the angle. One more chance. We've all had that horse. We've all <laughs> bet it over and over again. Uh, one more chance. That there, there's always an opportunity for the horse to come up and, and surprise everybody. So that's your field of 11 and our picks for the Rebel Stakes this coming Saturday, race number 11 at Oaklawn Park, going 1 and 1 16th of a mile. The race should be around 6.30 p.m. We ask that you like and subscribe. Uh, that way you are aware when the next video comes out. Uh, over next week's video, we will have three Derby prep races as we get closer to the run for the roses. We will see you guys next Friday.